Cha-Cha always worried about riding. He thought it was very difficult. He always made excuses whenever he had to write something. Some new pencils. Why don't you try writing some letters with them? No, Mom. Writing is too hard. I'll try another time. I'm playing my game now. Cha Cha's mother knew that it was very important for Cha-Cha to learn how to write. Cha-Cha always makes excuses when I ask him to write. Hmm, we must do something to show Cha-Cha how writing can be easy and fun. <laughs> Cha-Cha's parents went to meet Miss Dorothy. She was Cha-Cha's favorite teacher. Miss Dorothy, Cha-Cha thinks writing is too hard. He always makes excuses when I ask him to write something. Don't worry. We'll make writing fun for Cha-Cha. Later that day, Miss Dorothy went to Cha-Cha's class. Children, how many fingers do we have? Cha-Cha, can you tell me? We have ten fingers, Miss Dorothy. Five on each hand. That's right, Cha-Cha. But... Do you know that your fingers are very strong? They can help you do many things. And so, we must make them stronger. Come on, Cha-Cha. Let me show you how. Miss Dorothy showed Cha-Cha how to paint with his fingers. Dip your finger in the paint. Now, press it on the paper. Very good. Now, dip your finger in the paint again and write an A. <laughs> this is fun! Cha-Cha had fun writing his name with paint. Miss Dorothy then took Cha-Cha to the sand pit. She showed Cha-Cha how he could write letters in the sand. Come on, Cha-Cha. Let's write letters in the sand. Dorothy also taught Cha-Cha a new game with Chica.
Cha-Cha, you must write a letter on Chica's back with your finger. Chica will have to guess which letter it is. Okay, Miss Dorothy. Which letter is this? You're writing an S, Cha-Cha. And you're tickling me. <laughs> Miss Dorothy also showed Cha-Cha how he could write letters in the air. And water. Cha-cha, let's write in the air and in the water. Miss Dorothy then made Cha-Cha make giant letters with seeds on the ground. Come on, Cha-Cha. Jump across the letters now. <laughs> Now that Cha-Cha had made letters in so many fun ways, his fingers felt much stronger. also seem to like letters a lot more now. So, Miss Dorothy gave Cha-Cha a box of colored pencils. Cha-Cha, please pick your favorite color and write some letters in this book. Okay, Miss Dorothy. Cha-Cha took a bright blue pencil and started to write some letters. To his surprise, he found writing to be fun and easy. Gee, Miss Dorothy, writing is fun, and it's not one bit difficult. In fact, I think it's quite easy. When Cha-Cha went home that day, he had a surprise for his mother and father. Written your names on this sheet of paper. Well done, Cha Cha. We are so proud of you. Cha Cha enjoyed writing after that, and he wrote lots of letters and words in his book. Writing is fun and easy. It's just like learning A, B, C. 
going to feel worried about riding anymore. Custly was a careless little boy who always wasted things. Custly always wasted food and he always wasted water. Splash! Splash! <laughs> Miss Dorothy, Cusley's teacher, had noticed Cusley wasting water many times. She would warn Cusley, Cusley, you are always wasting water. You mustn't do that. Water is very precious. You must conserve or save water. But Cusley never paid attention to Miss Dorothy. One day, Miss Dorothy took Cusley's class to the beach. It was quite hot and sunny there. <laughs> Cusley wanted to have fun. And so, he began squirting water from his water bottle everywhere. After some time, Cusley felt thirsty. But when he opened his bottle to drink some water, he realized that there was no water left. My water is gone! And I'm very thirsty! What shall I do now? Cusley looked all over the beach, but he couldn't find any water to drink. Oh, my throat hurts! And my mouth feels so dry! I wish I hadn't wasted the water I had. I wish I had a sip of water to drink. Miss Dorothy noticed Cusley. She gave him some water from her own water bottle. Cusley, this is why I always tell you not to waste water. Water is very important. We need water to drink when we are thirsty. It is also important for growing and cooking our food. Without water, we wouldn't be able to bathe, clean, or survive. That's why it's important for us to conserve water, Cusley. We must save every drop we can. Cusley drank the water and thanked Miss Dorothy. Thank you, Miss Dorothy. I now realize how important water is. I won't waste it from now on. In fact, I promise to save every drop I can. <laughs> Cusley kept his promise. He never wasted water again. And if he saw anyone wasting water, he sang this song. There's water, water everywhere, but we must use it with care. Water is precious for all of us. Let's conserve it without a fuss. Cha-Cha were always very polite. They always spoke kindly to the workers in the house. Good morning! Good morning, kids! Thank you for making our garden so beautiful! You are welcome! But... 
Kasli was always very rude. Huh? Hey, you! Get out of my way! Huh? Huh? Ew! You're so stinky! Huh? Huh? Leave the garden! Now! Huh? You're a terrible, terrible cook! Huh? Huh? Cusley's mother was very disappointed in him. She wanted him to be polite and kind and respect everyone. So, one day, she asked the janitor, the garbage collector, the gardener, and the cook not to come to work. Please. Take a holiday for a few days. Don't come to work. I want Cusley to learn how important and helpful you all are. Yeah. The next day, Cusley found that the house was very dirty. Ew! Ugh, there's so much garbage lying around. Steven, why hasn't he picked it up? Cusley, Steven won't be coming anymore. You will have to clean the house on your own. Huh? And so, Cusley had to clean up his own mess. work made Cusley very hungry. He sat at the table and asked for lunch. I'm very hungry. Andy, get me my lunch. I'm sorry, Cusley, but Andy won't be coming anymore. You'll have to make your own lunch. What? to make his own lunch. And when Cusley went to throw the garbage out, he found that the garbage can was already completely full and that it was making everything very stinky. Ew! Where is Sandy? Why hasn't he emptied the garbage can? There's so much garbage in it. It's making everything very stinky. Sandy won't be coming anymore, Cusley. From now on, You'll have to empty the garbage on your own. Huh? And so, Cusley had to empty the garbage can on his own. Ew! This garbage is making me so stinky! Cusley then went to the garden to get some fresh air. But he found that the flowers were drooping and that there were weeds growing all over. Huh? What's happened to the garden? Flowers are drooping. And there are weeds growing everywhere. I'm sorry, Cusley. But Julian won't be coming anymore. You'll have to take the weeds out and water the plants yourself. Huh? So, Cusley had to look after the garden on his own. Ugh. Ugh. This is so difficult! Where are Steven, Julian, Sandy, and Andy? Why haven't they come today? When will they be back?
Wesley, don't you remember? You were very rude to them all. They work very hard for us. I don't think they'll come back unless you decide to be polite. Huh? Cusley's mother then helped him to see how hard everyone worked. All these people work so hard for us, Cusley. But you've never cared about them or had a kind word for them. I'm sorry, Mom. I now understand how hard they work. I promise I'll be polite and kind and show them that I care. Please ask them to come back. Hmm. Later that day, Cusley spent his time writing thank you notes. The next morning, Cusley went out with his mother and bought flowers and gifts. And the next day, when Stephen, Julian, Sandy, and Andy came to the house, Cusley spoke to them very politely. is for you. Thank you for keeping my house clean. Thank you, Cusley. This is for you, Julian. I know that you work very hard to make the garden beautiful. Thank you. Sandy, you are very important. Thank you for taking the garbage away. delicious food you make. And I'm sorry that I was rude to you all. It's okay, Cusley. After that day, Cusley always spoke politely and kindly to all of the workers. His manners made everyone happy. Yummy! And Cusley's mother felt very proud of him. Chiku's mother was always reminding her to wash her hands carefully. Chiku, please wash your hands with plenty of soap and water. That's the best way to keep them clean. Miss Dorothy has also told you to keep your hands clean. It's very important. Yes, Mom! But Chiku was very impatient. She didn't even want to spend one minute washing her hands. And so, she would only wet her hands and pretend that she had washed them. Have you washed your hands, Chiku? Um, yes, Mom. But I still see dirt on your hands, Chiku. Please be a good girl and wash your hands again. Okay, Mom. But Chiku didn't actually listen or wash her hands well. One day, Chiku went to play in the garden. She made sandcastles in the sandbox. She also sat on the seesaws and the swings. La la la, la la la. When Chiku went back home, it was time for supper. Chiku, please wash your hands well before you eat your supper. Yes, Mom! But Chiku didn't bother washing her hands. Instead, she sat at the table and started eating. Many nasty germs had climbed onto Chiku's hands while she was playing in the park. <laughs> and since Chiku hadn't bothered to wash her hands, they had stayed there. <laughs> the germs climbed onto the food Chiku was eating. 
and then they all went right into her stomach. When Chiku woke up the next morning, she found that she was feeling very sick. Ah! Uh, ow! I have a tummy ache. Uh, achoo! And I think I have a cold. And my head hurts too. I think you have a fever, Chiku. Did you wash your hands before supper yesterday? No, Mom. I didn't. The germs from your hands must have gone into your stomach and made you sick. They're in my stomach? Yes, Chiku. You'll have to miss school today and visit the doctor. Huh? But I have a tennis match today. And it's my friend Cha-Cha's birthday. All the fun if I miss school. I'm sorry, Chiku, but you have to see the doctor. So, Chiku went to visit the doctor. Chiku, the germs that were on your hands have gone into your stomach. That's what's making you feel ill. I'll give you some medicine to make you feel better. But please remember, you must always wash your hands with soap and water, especially before eating your meals. That's the best way for you to get rid of germs and stay healthy. The doctor then showed Chiku how to wash her hands. First, wet your hands with water and add soap. Then, rub your hands together palm to palm in a circular motion. Be sure to rub the backs of your hands the same way and up and down in between your fingers. Next, Hold your fingers together and rub your palms up and down. Make sure you rub all around your thumbs. Rub the backs of your hands and fingers up and down together. And continue to lather and scrub thoroughly all over your hands. Finally, wash it off with plenty of water. From then on, Chiku always made sure that she washed her hands well. Especially before she ate her meals. Chiku stayed healthy that way and never missed any fun again. In the city of Scottsdale, there lived a girl named Choo Choo. She was a sweet girl with a very kind heart. But she was so careless that she kept losing her school supplies. Although it upset her, Choo Choo's mom kept buying new school supplies. Then one Monday morning, her mommy yelled out, Choo Choo, could you get me your backpack, please? Yes, mommy. I'll be right there. Here it is. I've got to run to the restroom. I'll be right back. Her mom took out her pencil case and found it to be empty. Hmm, that's it. I've had enough of her losing her school supplies. This needs to stop. She needs to start being more responsible. Did you wash your hands? I sure did, Mommy. Good job. Listen, young lady. I have been patient with you. I have replenished your empty pencil case with school supplies every single day. I have replenished it with two new pencils and a sharpener again today. These are going to be your school supplies for the whole week. If you lose them, you won't get new ones for another week. Have I made myself clear? Yep. I'm going to be really careful with them, Mommy. Good. The school bus will be here any minute. Let's get going. Sweet. 
So, how was your day at school? It was good. I had a lot of fun. Okay, time to grab a fruit. Fruit? Ew! I will pretend I didn't hear that. Are you done with the fruit? Yes! Good. Do you have all of your school supplies? Choo Choo looked at her mom with a blank stare. I don't remember. Hmm, go fetch me your pencil case. Choo Choo walked to her backpack, grabbed her pencil case, and gave it to her mom. Nature calls. I'll be right back. Choo Choo's mom opened up the pencil case and once again was shocked to see it empty. Now I've had it. This girl needs to learn responsibility. Choo Choo, are you done? Nearly done, Mom. Be right there. Hurry up. We are heading out for some shopping. Ta-da! I'm here. Put on your shoes and hop into the car. Choo Choo ran to put on her shoes and jumped into the car. Let's head to the store and pick up a few things. Sure, Mom. Uh, do I get a treat? Hmm, one small chocolate. And that's it. Yay! Thank you! Choo Choo's mother stopped by the store. Choo Choo was busy walking along the aisle, searching for her chocolate. Her mom picked up a few packs of pencils, a few sharpeners, and some chocolates. The car stopped by a small foster home. Come on, Choo Choo! Choo Choo got down and held her mom's hand and walked along. Children, Mrs. Charlie is here to visit us. Could you all please come here? All the kids assembled in the visitor's area. Hello, little ones. Hello, Mrs. Charlie. This is my daughter, Choo Choo. Hello, Choo Choo. She wanted to visit you all and play with you. Aww, sweet of her. Could you kids teach her how to draw? Yes, Mrs. Charlie. One kid ran and fetched a piece of paper and the pencil case. Come on, Choo Choo, let's all draw. The kids gave the pencil case to Choo Choo. Choo Choo opened it and found a small pencil with a broken eraser and a broken sharpener. Choo Choo looked at her mom and her eyes flooded with tears. Hey, why are you crying? Come on, don't cry. Choo Choo silently walked over to her mom and whispered in her ear. Choo Choo's mom gave a pack of pencils to Choo Choo. Choo Choo, share these pencils with your friends here. Yes, mommy. All the kids jumped with joy. They sharpened the new pencils and started to draw. A few hours went by. Choo Choo, it's getting late. Give them all a hug. I know you will miss them all. Let's come back another day. Okay, Mommy. Choo Choo gave them all a hug. Soon. Choo Choo was awfully quiet. What's wrong, Angel? Choo Choo's eyes filled with tears. She started to talk. Mommy, my friends back there had one pencil with a broken eraser and a broken sharpener. Yes, they did. And here I've been losing my school supplies every single day. Hmm. I have been careless with my school supplies. I have lost
across so many pencils and sharpeners. If I had been careful, I could have shared them with my friends. Mommy? Yes, darling? I will never, ever lose my school supplies again. I have realized my mistake. I will be responsible, Mommy. Good, sweetheart. I'm glad you realized it. Mommy kissed Choo Choo. And from that day on, Choo Choo never again lost her school supplies. She also made a point to visit her friends every weekend and play with them. Choo Choo and her friends lived happily ever after. Chica was a good boy, but he was very lazy when it came to doing his homework. is so boring. Maybe I'll play now and do my homework later. <laughs> Chica always made excuses when his mother asked him to finish his homework. Chica, please finish your homework. You only have a few problems left. Later, Mom. I'm really tired now. Chica even made up stories when his teacher asked him to see his homework. Chica, please show me your homework. It, Miss Dorothy. Chica's mother met Miss Dorothy one day. She was Chica's favorite teacher. Chica never does his homework, Miss Dorothy. No matter how many times I tell him. I have an idea. We'll do something to make sure Chica always does his homework going forward. Miss Dorothy gave the children homework that day. Children, please be sure to finish your homework today. It's very important. I'll be checking it tomorrow. Yes, Miss Dorothy! But even after Miss Dorothy reminded him, Chica didn't do his homework that day. La la la, la la la. The next day, Miss Dorothy made an announcement to the class. Children, I have a surprise for you. The principal has invited you all to visit the school garden. The school garden? Yes, and you will all learn to be gardeners. <laughs> You'll get special hats and tools and have a chance to do some real gardening. Hooray! The children were excited, especially Chica. He couldn't wait to go to the garden. Gardening was one of his favorite things to do. What time are we going to the garden, Miss Dorothy? Right after I check everyone's homework. The principal said, she will only take the children who have completed their homework to visit the garden. So children, please show me your homework. Huh? Chiku and the other children showed Miss Dorothy their homework. I finished my homework, Miss Dorothy. So have we. But 
Chica hadn't done his homework. Oh, uh, huh. And so, Chica was the only one who wasn't allowed to go to the garden. I'd like to be a gardener too, Miss Dorothy. If you do your homework today, Chica, we can all go back to the garden tomorrow. That evening, Chica did his homework on his own. His mother didn't even have to remind him once. The next day, Chica immediately showed his homework to Miss Dorothy. I've done my homework, Miss Dorothy. Great work, Chica. Today, you too will get to be a gardener. Hooray! Miss Dorothy took the class to the garden again. And this time, Chica got a hat and tools as well. And he had fun gardening with all his friends. From that day on, Chica did his homework on his own every day. And both Miss Dorothy and Chica's mother felt very proud of him. a very timid boy. He was afraid to try new things. His sister Chiku always encouraged Chika. But he was too scared to try anything new. Come on, Chika! Try roller skating! It'll be fun! Mm, no thanks, Chiku. Chica would just stand quietly by himself while the other kids played and had fun. <laughs> One day, Chiku and the other kids were riding bikes. They wanted Chica to join them. Come on, Chica. We're all riding bikes. Please join us. that he was afraid. So he invited him to join him on his bike. Chica, why don't you sit with me on my bike? You don't have to pedal and you'll still be able to ride with us. Huh? Sit on your bike? Chica liked the idea of joining in without having to ride his own bike. So, he hopped on the back of Cha-Cha's bike. All the kids carefully rode down the street. <laughs> Chica was surprised to see how well Cha-Cha could ride. Cha-Cha, you're great on a bike. And so are Choo-Choo and Chiku. I wish I could ride one too, but I'm just too scared. When Cha-Cha was little, he used to be afraid too, Chica. But then, he tried it. And as he learned, he forgot all of his fears and really had fun. Come on! Why don't we show you how to ride? Choo Choo and the rest of the kids then showed Chica how to ride a bike on the street. You always have to look ahead while riding, Chica. And if you see someone in the way, you ring your bell, like this. That way, the person ahead knows you're coming and can make room. Wow! You also shouldn't ride too fast. Going slow is the safest thing to do. And always make sure not to go outside the bike lane. A 
And if you want to stop, press the brakes. Aha! Uh -huh. I see. Chiku took Chica to an empty street. She passed Cha-Cha's bike to him and asked Chica to try riding it. Chica, why don't you try riding this bike? I'm sure you can do it. Huh? Me? Yes, Chica, you! Encouragement made Chica feel like maybe he could learn to ride a bike. And to Chica's great surprise, he realized that he could ride very well. <laughs> this is so much fun! Choo Choo and the others rode behind him to help him feel more confident. Good work, Chica! You are doing great! In no time, Cha Cha found that Chica could even ride his bike alongside a big group of kids. Chica was very happy with himself. fun riding the bike today. And I don't think I'm afraid of trying new things anymore. Thanks to you guys. Thank you. And guess what? I plan on joining you every day when you guys ride your bikes. Hooray! From that day forward, Chica joined Choo Choo and the others whenever they rode their bikes. And even when they tried other new things, he was no longer afraid of trying something new. Chica was a sweet boy. But he always wanted to throw his things away whenever they got a little old or damaged. And he would ask his mother to buy him new ones instead. Mom, I don't want this jacket. The button came off. Please buy me a new one. I also want a new toy car. This one has a scratch. Chica's mother felt worried when Chica behaved this way. Chica, you can't throw away your things just because they are slightly damaged. You must learn to love them and care for them. After all, they've been yours for so long and have given you a lot of joy. We can always sew another button on the jacket and paint the car. But Chica didn't listen. No, I don't want them. I want new ones! He put his old things aside and didn't care for them anymore. One day, Chica saw his mother wearing a red dress. It looked very old. Chica saw that the dress even had a patch on it. Huh? Why is mom wearing that dress? It looks so old! Chica decided to ask his mother about the dress. Mom, why are you wearing that dress? It looks so old. You should throw it away and get a new one. Chica's mother <laughs> smiled. No, Chica. I love this dress. It's my favorite one. It's very special to me. Your daddy bought it for me soon after you were born. Really? Yes, Chica. And do you know when I wore it for the first time? When, Mom? It was on your first birthday. Really? Yes, Chica. Red was your favorite color when you were a baby. And you felt very happy whenever you saw me in this dress. And you would ask me to carry you 
Each time I wore this dress. Chica's mother told him more about the dress. Chica, do you know that when you first learned to speak, you would point out to this dress and say red? Red! I remember that now. Chica's mother showed him pictures of his first birthday party. And he saw how pretty she looked in the red dress. Look at you, Mom. You look so pretty in the dress. And look at you, Chica. You are so chubby and cute. Just like a teddy bear. And look at how you're holding my red dress here. <laughs> Yes! Chica began to understand why his mother had kept the dress for so long. Every time I wear this dress, Chica, I remember all the good times we've had together. And it makes me love the dress all the more. I love you, Mom! And I love this dress, too! Please wear it again. Don't ever throw it away. Oh, I won't, Chica. That day, Chica learned to love all his clothes and toys. No matter how old they were. And if they got a little damaged, she commended them and used them again. was at the beach with her family. She was looking through her new binoculars. Hmm, the grown-ups are resting. Some of the kids are making sandcastles. And some others are playing in the water. Suddenly, Choo Choo saw something in the water. Huh? There's something in the water. It's getting washed up on shore. I wonder what it is. It looks very big and blue. Choo Choo ran closer to the water. Oh no! It's a blue whale and it looks like it's in trouble. Everyone else on the beach looked at the blue whale quietly. No one did anything to help it. So Choo Choo ran and brought her father. Daddy, look! A blue whale has washed up on the shore. I think it needs some help. You are right, Choo Choo. This whale looks like it is hurt. We must do something to help it. Hello? Animal Ambulance? I'm calling from the beach. Please, come quickly. The Animal Ambulance came very quickly with its team. The team had some vets or animal doctors. They immediately gave the blue whale first aid and treated its wounds. There you go, big guy. This should make you feel better. After some time, 
The animal ambulance team thought the blue whale was ready to go back into the water. Choo Choo, thanks to your quick thinking, we were able to help the blue whale. I think it's now time for this big guy to go back in the water. That's wonderful! The animal ambulance's team picked up the blue whale and got ready to release it into the water. But just before the blue whale dived into the water, it whistled and waved its enormous fin at Choo Choo. Huh? Choo Choo, the blue whale is saying goodbye to you. It's also thanking you for your help. Goodbye, blue whale. Goodbye to you too. As the blue whale swam back to its home deep in the water, everyone clapped for Choo Choo. Little Choo Choo's kindness had saved the big blue whale that day. Chica was always in a rush. He brushed in a rush. He took a bath in a rush. He dressed in a rush. He ate in a rush. Chica rushed with everything. Which was why he often didn't get things right and made so many mistakes. Come on, Chiku. I'm ready to go to school. Wait, Chica. You're not wearing shoes. And what about your milk? Please be more patient so you can get things right the first time. Huh? One day, Chica's teacher, Miss Dorothy, made an announcement. Children, we are having a talent show next week. You all must participate in it. You can dance, sing, recite a poem, or even show everyone how you do judo and karate. But please remember to practice. We'll have a rehearsal later this week to make sure everyone is ready. Ah! Chica was very excited. He had been learning karate and wanted to show everyone his moves. But, as usual, he only practiced a few minutes before the rehearsal. Hiya! 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 That's enough practice. I'm sure I'll do well in the rehearsals. But Chica's mother felt he needed more practice. That's not enough, Chica. You must practice some more. Practice is the only way to be prepared and remember your moves. Aw, oh, Mom! Not now! I want to play now! Chica didn't listen to his mother. He was sure that he had practiced enough. On the day of the rehearsal, all the children performed very well. Rain, rain, go away. Come again another day. Next, it was Chica's turn. But when he went on the stage, he found that he had forgotten all his moves. Forgotten my moves. Chica felt terrible. He sat in a corner all by himself. Oh, why couldn't I remember my moves? Miss Dorothy noticed Chica. She sat down next to him. Chica, I don't think you practiced enough. It's very difficult to remember things if you don't practice. But if you do, you not only will remember your moves, 
but you'll shine in all that you do. Is that true, Miss Dorothy? Yes, Chica. Now listen, there are still a few days before the talent show. If you take your time and practice every day, you'll be ready to shine on performance day. Okay, Miss Dorothy, I'll do it. Chica practiced every day until the day of the talent show. He stayed focused on practice and didn't get distracted. Chica, I'm going to play. Are you coming along? No, Chiku. I'm practicing. Soon, it was the day of the talent show. Rain, rain, go away. Come again another day. When it was Chica's turn, he went on to the stage. And he gave an outstanding performance. Hiya! 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 Hooray! Everyone liked Chica's performance. And Chica even won a prize. That was an outstanding performance, Chica. Well done. I'm sure you practiced a lot. Thank you. From that day onwards, Chica always practiced. He also made sure to take his time and not get distracted. And that made Chica shine in all that he did. Choo Choo had lots of toys and books that she no longer played with or read. I remember this toy. I used to have so much fun playing with it. And this used to be my favorite book. Since Choo Choo no longer needed the old toys and books, her mother asked her to give them away. Choo Choo, why don't you give your old books and toys away? You don't need them anymore. You can give them to some children who aren't lucky enough to have toys and books of their own. That will make them happy, and it will also make your room much neater. No, Mom! I don't want to give my things away. I want to keep them for myself. Huh? Choo Choo didn't want to give her old toys and books away. Mrs. Charlie hoped that she would change her mind. She knew that the toys and books could be useful to many other children. One day, Mrs. Charlie met Miss Dorothy. She was Choo Choo's favorite teacher. Miss Dorothy, Choo Choo has lots of old toys and books that she doesn't need anymore. I want her to give them away, but she won't listen. Don't worry, Mrs. Charlie. I'm collecting old toys and books for the children who live in foster homes. I'll tell Choo Choo about it. Thank you, Miss Dorothy. So, Miss Dorothy made an announcement in Choo Choo's class. Children, I'm collecting old toys and books. I'll then give them to some children who don't have these things. It would be very generous of you to share your old toys and books with them. If you have anything that you're not using and don't want to waste, please bring it tomorrow. Many of Choo Choo's friends liked Miss Dorothy's idea. 
I have so many old toys and books that I don't need, Miss Dorothy. I'd like to give them away. Me too! Huh? That's very kind of you, children. Please bring them with you tomorrow. When Choo Choo went home, she looked at her bookshelf. She found that she had many books that she no longer needed. Hmm, I finished reading all these books. Choo Choo opened her toy cupboard. She saw that she had many toys that she no longer played with. Hmm, I'm too old for these toys now. Choo Choo began to wonder if she too should give her old toys and books away. Mom, Miss Dorothy is collecting old toys and books for some children who live in a foster home. She says that they will make the children who live there very happy. Can I give away some of my old toys and books too? Yes, Choo Choo. I think you should. In fact, why don't you give away all the toys and books you no longer use? It will make those children very happy. So, Choo Choo packed all her old toys and books. <laughs> Hi, friends. It was fun playing with you all. But you must make someone else happy now. The next day, Choo Choo took the old toys and books to school. Many other children had also brought their old toys and books. They gave them to Miss Dorothy, and she put them in some big boxes. When the boxes were full, Miss Dorothy picked them up and got ready to go to the foster home. She invited Choo Choo and her friends to join her. Come on, children. Let's go to the foster home and give your toys and books away. There were many children in the foster home and they were very happy to see the boxes. Hi, children. These toys and books are for you. My little friends want to share them with you. Yay! Hooray! The children at the foster home were very happy. They thanked Choo Choo and her friends. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your toys and books with us. You're welcome. The children at the foster home were very excited to receive the toys and books. started playing and reading immediately. Choo Choo was surprised to see how happy her old toys and books were making the children. My teddy bear is making this little girl so happy. I wish I had given it to her earlier. And that little boy is smiling while reading my favorite book. Just like I used to. Choo Choo and her friends then thanked Miss Dorothy. Thank you, Miss Dorothy. You helped us make so many children happy. And you also made sure we weren't wasting our toys. You're welcome, children. You must always remember not to waste anything. 
some of the things that you no longer need or use can make others very happy. From that day on, Choo Choo never hesitated to give her old toys and things away. For she now knew how much joy they brought when she shared them. Cusley was spending the day at Choo Choo and Cha Cha's house. He loved playing with their toys. I like your dinosaur, Cha Cha. Your teddy bear is so cuddly, Choo Choo. Can I play with them? Of course, Cusley. You can play with our toys for as long as you want. Cusley played and played. When it was time to go home and his parents came to pick him up, Cusley refused to give Choo Choo and Cha Cha's toys back. He was being very greedy. Mommy, Daddy, I want Cha Cha's dinosaur and Choo Choo's teddy bear. I want to take them home. Cusley's parents told Cusley to give the toys back. Cusley? Those toys belong to Choo Choo and Cha Cha. Please give them back. You already have so many dinosaurs and teddy bears of your own. Cusley wouldn't listen to his parents. He began to throw a tantrum. I want this teddy bear. I want this dinosaur. I won't go home without them. Cusley's parents were embarrassed by Cusley's behavior. Then Cusley's mother had an idea. All right, Cusley. Let's leave the toys here and go for a walk. If you still want them when we come back, we'll take them home. Cusley's parents took Cusley for a walk. They went into a neighborhood that Cusley had never been to before. He was very surprised to see how small the houses there were. Huh? The houses here are so small. Yes, Cusley. Why don't you look around? Cusley began to look around the neighborhood. He noticed the children who lived there didn't have nice clothes like he did. They also didn't have many toys. And the ones they did have were broken. Huh? Despite having so little, the children were sharing their toys with each other. Some of them were even giving away the only toys they had to their friends. My teddy bear's ear is torn, but he gives very good hugs. I'd like you to have him. Thank you. Mommy, look! That boy just gave away his teddy bear. Yes, Cusley. Wasn't that kind of him? He's giving away his things even though he has so little. Cusley, look how happy the children are. They don't have as many toys as you do, but they are still happy. They're also not being greedy by trying to take their friend's toys away like you were. Oh. Cusley began to realize how greedy he had been. You're right, Mom. You're right, Dad. I have many toys. I should be happy with them. Cusley asked his parents to take him back to Choo Choo and Cha Cha's house. Choo Choo and Cha Cha were waiting for Cusley. They had put the toys he wanted in a bag. Cusley, you can have my dinosaur. 
And you can have my teddy bear. Huh? Cusley felt ashamed. Choo Choo and Cha Cha were willing to give him their toys just to make him happy. Remembering the children he had seen in the neighborhood, Cusley decided not to be greedy. Thank you, Choo Choo and Cha Cha. But I already have many toys. I also just saw some kids with so little. So I'm going to share some of my toys with them. Wow, Cusley. That's very kind of you. Cusley went straight home and packed some of his toys. He took them to the neighborhood and gave them to the children. This is for you, and this is for you. Thank you. Thank you. Cusley's parents were very proud of him, and Cusley felt very happy too. Good job, Cusley. You were very kind today. Thank you, Mommy. Thank you, Daddy. That day, Cusley realized how lucky he was. He had so many things that other children didn't have. And he decided to be grateful and happy with whatever he had. Yay! In the busy city of Scottsdale, there lived a boy named Cha-Cha. Though he was a sweet kid by nature, he didn't know how to manage his time. This made him difficult to manage for his mother. Getting him to do his work on time was always a challenge for his mother. Yeah. From the moment he awoke until the moment he was tucked back into bed at night, his mother struggled to get him to do his work. Good morning, my angel. Rise and shine. Get up. It's time to go to school. I'm going to fix your lunch and we'll be back in five minutes. Please get up and get ready. I don't want to have to keep yelling at you to wake up, please. His mom goes to fix his lunch and mumbles to herself. Cha-Cha is growing up, but he still does not know how to manage his time. I have tried everything, but nothing has worked so far. It zaps me of all my energy. I've been thinking the same thing too. Why don't you take a trip to the school and talk to his teacher? Hmm, I guess I should. A little help from his school couldn't hurt. I'll go today. Hmm, gotta go. Time to hit the road before the traffic starts to pile up. Okay, I love you. Have a good day. I love you too. Have a good day. Cha-Cha, are you up yet? Cha-Cha, you're going to be late for school. Okay, okay. I'm getting up. Stop yelling already. Cha-Cha gets up and starts to get ready. Cha-Cha then finishes his breakfast. Get your bag, Cha-Cha. It's time to go to school. Yeah, yeah. Don't give me that attitude, young man. Now get up. Cha-Cha gets into the car and his mom drives him to school. Run, Cha-Cha. The bell just rang. Have a good day, sweetheart. Okay, okay, I'm going. Cha-Cha walked slowly to class. His mom parked the car and headed towards the principal's office. She knocked on the door and went into the principal's office. Good morning, Miss Lucy. Good morning, Miss Charlie. Well, well, what a surprise. It's good to see you. What can I do for you today? Cha-Cha's mom tells the principal about Cha-Cha's struggles with time management and asks for her help. The principal smiles. <laughs> I get it. I have an idea. 
Tomorrow is the field trip that he has eagerly been awaiting. The bus leaves school at 7.30 a.m. Drive him to school tomorrow, but get here five minutes late. I have a hunch that this plan will help him learn. Thanks, Miss Lucy. Cha-Cha's mom leaves the school and heads back home. The next morning, Cha-Cha, wake up and get ready. Today is your field trip. The bus will leave without you if you don't hurry. Cha-Cha yeah. gets up and looks at the clock. It's already late. Let me get ready. We've got to get there on time, Mommy. Like the principal said, Cha-Cha's mom made sure she was five minutes late dropping him off. When they arrived at school, Cha-Cha found that the school bus had left without him. His eyes filled with tears. Cha-Cha stood there feeling miserable with a long, sad face. I'm so sorry, Cha-Cha. It's sad that the bus left without you. All this happened because I was not on time. It's all my fault. I'm sorry, Mom. Suddenly, he heard a honk from the school bus from around the corner. His face lit up as he looked at his mom. Wow! It's my school bus! It's my school bus! It came back to pick me up! He hugged his mom and looked at her. Mommy, I have learned a lesson. I'm never going to be troublesome for you anymore. And I'm going to make sure that I manage my time better. I'm sorry for what I've put you through, Mommy. Aww. Mommy hugged Cha-Cha tightly. Now go and have a great field trip. Cha-Cha climbed into the bus and waved bye to his Mommy. And from that day on, he managed his time all by himself and made sure he was not troublesome for his mom. It was a bright Sunday morning. Choo Choo was playing in the park when she heard a strange sound. Huh? Who's making that sound? It must be a little animal that lives in the park. Choo Choo looked around and found a squirrel. Hello, little one. I am so happy to see you. But you're not looking very happy. You look like you're crying. Oh, your paw is hurt, isn't it? Choo Choo noticed that the squirrel's paw was injured. She immediately picked up the squirrel and took it with her. Don't worry, little one. I'll take you to someone who will help you feel better. Just as Choo Choo was leaving the park, Cusley called out to her. Choo Choo, wait! But Choo Choo didn't hear Cusley. Choo Choo hurried and took the squirrel to a veterinarian. A veterinarian is a doctor that treats animals. Doctor, I found this squirrel in the park. I think its paw is injured. Good work, Choo Choo. This squirrel is in a lot of pain. Just as Choo Choo and the vet were talking, Cusley came in. Choo Choo, that is my pet squirrel. Give it back to me. I'm sorry, Cusley. I had no idea. I brought the squirrel here because it was crying. Look, its paw is injured. I know that. The squirrel hurt its paw because it was trying to run away when I was putting it in a cage. Cusley, you shouldn't have done that. It isn't 
isn't nice to hurt little animals or put them in cages. We can talk about that later, children. First, let's help this squirrel. The vet carefully puts some medicine on the squirrel's paw. He then wrapped it with a clean bandage. In no time, the squirrel looked like it was feeling much better. The vet then spoke to Cusley. Choo Choo is right, Cusley. It isn't nice to hurt animals. This squirrel was in a lot of pain because of you. And the squirrel's home is in a tree, not in a cage. Choo Choo, I think you should take this little squirrel back to where it belongs. Huh? Choo Choo lovingly carried the squirrel back to the park. She left the squirrel near a tree where some other squirrels were playing. You can go home now, little one. Take care. Choo Choo then pointed out to Cusley how happy the squirrel looked. Cusley, look! Doesn't the squirrel look happy to be here with its friends? You're right, Choo Choo. I shouldn't have hurt the squirrel. I promise I won't hurt any little animal again. Thanks to Choo Choo, the squirrel was back in the park, living happily with its friends. And Cusley kept his promise. He never again hurt any little animal. Cusley liked having nice things. If he liked something that his friends had, he would ask for it. Cha-Cha, I like your pencil. Please give it to me. I'm sorry, Cusley, but this is my favorite pencil. Heh. <laughs> If Cusley's friends didn't give him what he wanted, Cusley would do something very bad. He would quietly take them anyway. Aha! Miss Dorothy had noticed Cusley's bad habit. She tried to talk to him about it, but Cusley pretended he hadn't done anything. It's not nice to take your friend's things, Cusley. Uh, but I didn't take anything, Miss Dorothy. One day, Cusley brought a new pencil sharpener to school. He left it on his desk and went out to play. Cha-Cha wanted to teach a lesson to Cusley. When Cusley came back, his pencil sharpener was missing. Huh? <laughs> My pencil sharpener's gone! Someone must have stolen it. Cha-Cha and the other children returned to the classroom. They saw that Cusley was upset. What's wrong, Cusley? My new pencil sharpener is missing. Someone has stolen it. Don't worry, Cusley. None of our friends steal. So your pencil sharpener must be around here somewhere. Children then looked for Cusley's pencil sharpener. They looked all over the classroom. Eventually, Cha Cha found it under a desk. Your pencil sharpener's here, Cusley. It must have fallen off the desk. Maybe that's what happened to my favorite pencil, too. Huh? 
Wesley was happy to have his pencil sharpener back. But he also felt bad that he had stolen from his friends. What he had done was very wrong. After all, his friends were always kind to him. Uh. The next day, Cusley returned all the things he had stolen. I'm sorry, Cha-Cha. I took your pencil. Oh, my favorite pencil. You had it, Cusley? Cusley realized how important everyone's things were to them. And so, he never stole anything again. Cha-Cha was a fussy eater. He always complained when asked to eat fruits and vegetables. And he always said no when his mother tried to give him healthy food. <laughs> Ew! I don't like carrots and spinach. No! I don't want apples. No bananas or oranges for me either. One day, Miss Dorothy, Cha-Cha's teacher, made an announcement in the classroom. Children, I have some good news for you. We are organizing a fitness day at our school next month. There will be lots of different activities and it will be a lot of fun. If you compete, you could win prizes. We'll start practicing tomorrow. Cha-Cha was very excited about the fitness day. He liked to run races and win prizes. I'm going to compete in all of the activities and I'm going to run super fast. The very next day, Miss Dorothy started helping the children practice for the upcoming fitness day. Ready, set, Cha-Cha's friends ran very quickly, but Cha-Cha felt tired and couldn't run very fast. Cha-Cha felt quite sad when he realized that he was much slower than the other children. He slumped down quietly in the shade of a tree. Miss Dorothy saw Cha-Cha sitting by himself. Cha-Cha, are you upset because you haven't been running as fast as your friends? That's right, Miss Dorothy. I want to run faster, but I just can't. Cha-Cha, if you want to run faster, you must take better care of your body. To be healthier, you must eat plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables. Once you start eating better, I'm sure you'll be able to run very fast and probably win some prizes too. Huh? Really, Miss Dorothy? Yes, Cha-Cha. When Cha-Cha got home from school that evening, he surprised his mother by asking for fruits and vegetables. Hi, Mom. I'd like to eat some fresh fruits and vegetables. <gasps> really, Cha-Cha? Yes. Miss Dorothy says they will make me healthier and run faster. I think Miss Dorothy is right, Cha-Cha. Cha-Cha began eating fruits and vegetables without making a fuss. Mmm! These carrots! 
spinach are yummy. May I have some more spinach? I'd like a banana with my lunch, please. And some apples and oranges, too. After a few days, Cha-Cha found that he could run much faster than before and without being tired. When fitness day arrived, Cha-Cha felt strong enough to run all the races. Ready, set, go! Cha-Cha came first in many of the races, and he won lots of prizes. Hooray! I'm a winner today! I had the strength to run fast and win all these prizes. Thanks to Miss Dorothy. She's the one who told me that eating fresh fruits and vegetables would make me healthy. Thank you, Miss Dorothy. Thank you. Miss Dorothy had taught Cha-Cha a valuable lesson. Eating plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables certainly does make one healthier. friends were very excited. They were getting ready to have a picnic. I put chocolate milk, fruit, cake, sandwiches, and cookies all in the basket. We'll eat them at our picnic. Ooh, it looks delicious. Bring this ball. We could play with it at our picnic. And I have a new camera. I can take pictures of us at the picnic. Everyone was looking forward to the picnic. But suddenly, dark clouds filled the sky. And it began to rain. father noticed how upset the children were. He knew how excited they all were for the picnic. Don't worry, children. If the rain stops soon, you can still go on your picnic. But the rain didn't stop. Big drops fell from the sky, and Choo Choo and the other children were very disappointed. Put so many delicious goodies in our picnic basket. They would have been delicious at our picnic. And this ball is of no use now, huh? take any fun pictures with my camera now. Hmm. Choo Choo's father watched the children. They all looked so sad. He wanted to cheer them up. So he came up with an idea of something they could do to have fun in the rain. <laughs> Choo Choo and the other children heard some voices. Do you hear those voices? It sounds like someone's laughing outside. Come on, let's go see who it is. The children stepped outside, and to their surprise, they saw all of their parents playing in the rain. A 
much fun. Come on, children. Come and play. All of the children join their parents playing soccer, jumping in puddles, and having loads of fun in the rain. For the rain. Hip hip! Hooray! The children had a lot of fun that day, and Cusley took some great pictures. Say cheese! Cheese! <laughs> then everyone sat together under an enormous garden umbrella in the backyard and ate the snacks that Choo Choo had packed in the picnic basket. Picnic in our backyard. Hooray! The rain has made our day even more fun. Choo Choo, Cha Cha, Chica, Chiku, and Cusley had a wonderful time that day. They were glad that it had rained. They thanked Choo Choo's father for cheering them up and showing them how much fun they could have playing in the rain. Thank you, Dad. One day, while playing at school, Cha-Cha fell down and hurt himself. Ow! Because he got hurt, Cha-Cha had to sit out while his friends played some of his favorite games. That made him feel very upset. Cha-Cha still felt sad when it was time to go home. And he sat by himself very quietly. Choo-Choo, Chica, and Chiku tried to cheer up Cha-Cha. Why don't you come play with us, Cha-Cha? Hmm, we're going to play a new game. It won't be any fun without you. Cha-Cha's mother encouraged him to go and play with the other children. Cha-Cha, why don't you join Choo-Choo, Chica, and Chiku? You'll have fun. And you'll forget all about what happened today. But Cha-Cha was still upset. No, thank you. I don't want to play with anyone today. Just then, the baby woke up. and started crawling all over the house. The baby saw Cha-Cha and noticed that he looked very upset. Uh? The baby took some of his favorite toys and gave them to Cha-Cha. He wanted Cha-Cha to play with them and feel happy. But Cha-Cha didn't want the baby's toys. Uh, no! The baby tried to pull Cha-Cha so Cha-Cha would get up and play. Uh, uh. But Cha-Cha refused to get up. No! The baby then looked at Cha-Cha very lovingly and smiled. The baby's innocent smile made Cha-Cha smile too. And Cha-Cha finally stopped being upset and stood up. Baby, you are so sweet. You cheered me up with your love and your smile. I love 
love you. To Cha Cha's great surprise, the baby kissed him. Cha Cha felt so happy that he laughed. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Cha Cha then went to join Chu Chu, Chica, and Chiku in their games. Wait for me, everybody. I'm coming to play. Hooray! Everyone was happy to see Cha Cha smiling again. They were so surprised that the baby, who was so little, had managed to cheer Cha Cha up with his love. Yeah! It was a warm, sunny summer morning. Choo Choo came out of the house and looked around the backyard. What a lovely day! I wonder what my friends and I can do to have fun today. I have an idea. I'll invite all my friends over to make a fort. And when it's done, we can call it the Happy Fort. Then we can sit inside the Happy Fort and do happy things. Choo Choo called all of her friends. They all came quickly. Everyone was excited. What are we going to do today, Choo Choo? We are going to make a fort. And we are going to call it the Happy Fort. And when it's ready, we'll sit inside it and do happy things. Cha Cha, Chiku, and Chica liked Choo Choo's idea. That sounds fun. We'll all help make the fort. But Cusley didn't want to participate. I don't want to make your fort, Choo Choo. I don't want to sit inside it either. I'll play my own game instead. Huh? Together, Choo Choo, Cha Cha, Chica, and Chiku made a wonderful happy fort. And they had a lot of fun doing it. Cusley, however, didn't join them. Not even when the others asked him to. Join us, Cusley. Yes, Cusley. We are having fun. No. Huh? Cusley didn't join the others. And so Choo Choo and the other children made the fort on their own. Soon, it was ready. Fort is ready. Let's sit inside it now and do happy things. Choo Choo, Cha Cha, Chiku, and Chica sat inside the fort. They played games and sang some happy songs. <laughs> Let's pretend it's raining. Inside the fort, Cusley noticed how much fun Choo Choo and the others were having. Huh? My friends are having so much fun. Ah, I wish I had joined them and not been so rude. Choo Choo noticed Cusley looking disappointed. And so she suggested to the others that they invite Cusley to join them. Cha Cha, Chica, Chiku. I think Cusley's feeling left out. Let's invite him into our happy fort. Yes, let's do that. We'd love to have Cusley in our happy fort. And so. Choo Choo, Cha Cha, Chica, and Chiku invited Cusley into the Happy Fort. Cusley, please join us in our Happy Fort. 
Come and play and do happy things with us. Huh? But I didn't help make it. Don't worry, Cusley. Come on in. Yes. Come and join the fun. So, Cusley joined his friends in the fort. Baking cakes! Pat a cake, pat a cake, baker's man! Bake me a cake as fast as you can! Roll it and pat it and mark it with B! And put it in the oven for baby and me! Yay! <laughs> Cusley had a lot of fun playing in the happy fort. He was glad Choo Choo and the others had invited him in. That day, he decided that he would never be rude again and that he would join in whenever his friends invited him to do something fun. Choo Choo had a cute little puppy. His name was Bubbles. Choo Choo loved Bubbles very much. Choo Choo took Bubbles for a walk in the park every day. Choo Choo made sure Bubbles stayed clean. <laughs> Good night, Bubbles. Sweet dreams. Choo Choo even reminded her father when it was time to take Bubbles to the vet. Today is Monday, Daddy. We have to take Bubbles to the vet. That's right, Choo Choo. The vet was an animal doctor. He would make sure that Bubbles stayed healthy. The vet was very kind to Bubbles. He even gave him some special doggy treats. Come here, Bubbles. I've got some nice biscuits for you. Good boy. <laughs> Bubbles stopped feeling afraid of the vet. And he began to enjoy his checkups. Bubbles didn't even feel afraid when he had to get a shot. Good boy, Bubbles. Very good. The vet told Choo Choo how to feed Bubbles. Choo Choo, you must always remember, Bubbles needs special food meant for puppies. He must not eat the food we eat. Bubbles can get very ill if he eats the foods humans eat. I'll remember that. One day, Choo Choo's friend, Cusley, came over to play with Choo Choo and their friends. Hi, everyone. Hi, Hi Cusley. Choo Choo's mother, Mrs. Charlie, made pizza for the children. Mm. Mm. The pizza smelled delicious. And Bubbles came to see what the children were eating. Mmm. Mm. Cusley saw Bubbles watching them, and he gave the puppy a big slice of pizza. Hi, Bubbles. Are you hungry? Do you want some pizza, too? Here's a slice. Choo Choo noticed Cusley feeding Bubbles. Huh? Choo Choo stopped Cusley immediately. Cusley, please don't give Bubbles any pizza. The pizza is meant for us. Bubbles needs special food meant for puppies. He can get ill if he eats the things we eat. Huh? After some time, Bubbles stopped playing. He sat in a corner and began to whimper. <laughs> huh? Choo Choo called Mrs. Charlie immediately. Mom? Come soon! Bubbles is crying! Oh dear! Bubbles must be feeling ill. Let's take him to the vet. Mrs. Charlie and Choo Choo rushed Bubbles to the vet. Bubbles is crying, Doctor! 
I think he's feeling ill because he ate some pizza. You're right, Choo Choo. The pizza must have given Bubbles a tummy ache. The vet gave Bubbles some medicine. This will make you feel better, Bubbles. The vet then told Choo Choo what to do. Choo Choo, you must give Bubbles this medicine every day for a whole week. And make sure he only eats puppy food. I'll do that. Thank you. When Choo Choo and Mrs. Charlie returned home, they saw Cusley waiting for them. He was very worried about Bubbles. Choo Choo, I hope Bubbles okay. I'm sorry I gave him the pizza. I didn't know it would make him ill. I'm sorry, Bubbles. <laughs> Choo Choo took very good care of Bubbles. And she gave him the medicine just as the vet had asked her to do. Soon, Bubbles' tummy got better, and he began wagging his tail and barking happily again. Oh, Bubbles, you look much better now. Yes, Choo Choo, Bubbles is fine now. All thanks to you. Your love and care helped Bubbles get well. Bubbles also realized how much Choo Choo loved and cared for him. And so, he gave Choo Choo a nice wet lick. It was his way of saying thank you to her. <laughs> a few days later, Choo Choo fell ill. Choo Choo, Choo had to stay home. She missed playing with her friends and felt lonely. Bubbles noticed Choo Choo. He understood how lonely she was feeling. And so he found a ball and started playing with her. Huh? You want to play ball, Bubbles? Okay. Choo Choo and Bubbles had a lot of fun that evening. And Choo Choo even stopped missing her friends. <laughs> You've made me feel so happy, Bubbles. You're my best friend. Miss Dorothy is going to give us a class project today. Yay! I can't wait to hear what it is. Well, whatever it is, you can bet that mine will be best project in class ever. <laughs> Good morning, kids. Good morning, Miss Dory. What beautiful flowers, Miss Dorothy. Yeah, they're real pretty. Did you buy them, Miss Dorothy? No, I grew them myself. Wow! I love to be able to grow flowers. I'm so happy to hear that, because that's what our class project is all about. Planting and growing flowers at home. Yay! Well, I'm just as excited as you are. So let's get this project started. Here are seeds and flower pots for each of you. When you get home, you need to put soil in the flower pots and sow the seeds in the soil. And then, pretty flowers will bloom. Um, yes, Cusley, but not immediately. It'll take time and patience and lots of work. How much time, Miss Dorothy? Is there a way to make plants grow quickly? I'm afraid not. There are no shortcuts. It takes time and care. How often do we have to take care of the plants, Miss Dorothy? Every single day. To grow healthy plants, you need to see that they have enough water, sunlight, and air. Every day. And if you do that for a few weeks, you'll be rewarded with your own pretty flowers. Wow! It's a lot of hard work. Do you think you'll be able to do that? Yes, Miss Dorothy! Great! And in a few weeks, 
when your plants have flowered, you'll all bring them to class for show and tell, and we'll talk all about what we've learned from this project. That'll be the best part, because my plant will have the best flowers, because I'm the best. Oh, Husley. I'm sure you'll all do a good job and learn a lot from this project. All the best. Can't wait to get home and get started on this project. Same here. I'm so excited about all the stuff I'll learn. Yeah, me too. And I'm ready for the hard work. Wow, don't work too hard though. Cause no matter what you do, my project's gonna be the best. Day one. Grow, grow, there you go. My little flower seed. There you go, little seed. I'll take care of you. I promise. Soil, check. Water, check. Sunlight, very good. You're gonna do great, little seed. Here's some music for you, little seed. Hmm. Miss Dorothy said that we have to put soil in the flower pot and sow the seed. That means I'll have to stick my hands in dirt. Ugh, I don't wanna do that. I've got a few weeks. Maybe I'll plant this tomorrow. That's such a smart idea. Can't help it if I'm full of smart ideas. After five days. Well, kids, it's been five days since you all took your seeds and pots home. I'd love to hear how the project is coming along for all of you. Who wants to go first? Miss Dorothy. I've been watering the pot every day and seeing that it gets sunlight and fresh air. And guess what? This morning, I saw a teeny tiny little plant where I planted the seed. Yes, me too. The, the same, same thing, thing happened, happened to my seed. seed. Sounds like you're all taking very good care of your seeds. What about you, Cusley? How's your project coming along? Uh, there's no tiny plant in my flower pot. Uh, uh, what I mean is, mine's quite big already. Can't call it a tiny plant. I guess it's because I'm taking very good care of it. Sounds like you're doing a great job, Cusley. Keep it up. Where's that box of seeds? Where did it go? Oh no, looks like I've lost it. What do I do now? Never mind, I'll think of something. I'm sure I'll get one of my great ideas. In fact, I think I already got one. Some weeks later. Hi, little flower. Miss Dorothy, this morning I woke up to find a pretty flower in my pocket. The same, same thing happened, happened to my seed. seed. What about you, Cusley? Oh, of course. Uh, mine's flowered. In fact, the flower's so big and bright, I don't need a light in my room at night. Great going, kids. Now remember, tomorrow is show and tell day when everyone brings their projects to class so we can all take a look and talk about what we've learned. Is everyone all set? All set, Miss Dorothy! Tomorrow's show and tell. Time to put my grand idea into action. Good evening, Mr. Gardner. Well, hello, Cusley. What can I do for you? You can help me by planting that tall plant with that big flower in this flower pot, please. Why, of course, Cusley. That's no trouble at all. Thank you, Mr. Gardner. Ha! Project done. That was easy peasy. How smartly I've managed it, while the other kids had to work hard every day. <laughs> Ta-da! Feast your eyes on the best class project. How's your flower so huge? That 
that's because, um, that's because I fed it healthy things like, uh, milk. I gave it milk to drink. But milk's not good for plants. Water is. Surely you know that, Cusley. And Miss Dorothy gave us all the same seeds. So how is your flower different from all of ours? Yeah, it's even a different color. Oh, that's because I I kept it under a pink light. But plants don't need pink lights. They need sunlight. Surely you learned that much about growing plants, Cusley. <sighs> I learned nothing. That's because unlike the rest of you, I didn't grow this myself. Miss Dorothy, I have something to tell you. Go on, Cusley. I didn't do my project like I was supposed to do. I didn't plant the seed when everyone else did. And then on the last day, I got Mr. Gardner to plant this flower in my pot. I took the easy way out, Miss Dorothy. And I realized that that was wrong because by not doing my project myself, I didn't learn anything. From now on, I'll always do my projects myself and the right way. Cusley, I'm glad you've realized your mistake and told the truth. Yes, Cusley, that was brave of you. Not easy to admit one's mistakes. Well done, Cusley. You're pretty awesome. Really? I'm awesome? <laughs> well, haven't I always told you that? Oh, Hustly! Miss Dorothy, I want to take another crack at this project. And I want to do it properly this time. Could I please have a box of seeds? Oh, sure, Hustly. I think that's a great idea. Thanks, Miss Dorothy. And be sure that I'll grow the best flower ever. <laughs> oh, Hustly! Oh,